time for a mini ultrasound physics review. Let's discuss ultrasound Doppler artifacts. Ultrasound artifacts are echoes or reflections that do not correspond to actual structures or echoes that are missing on an image or echoes that are in the wrong location or echoes that are displaying the wrong characteristics such as incorrect size, shape, or brightness. Artifacts occur because the ultrasound machine makes seven assumptions about sound waves. When one or more of these assumptions fail to occur, an ultrasound artifact is produced. Let's talk about the assumptions that an ultrasound machine makes about sound waves. Number one, sound travels in a straight line. Number two, sound travels into the tissue, encounters a structure, and travels directly back to the transducer. Number three, Sound travels at a constant speed in soft tissue, 1540 meters per second. Number four, echoes arise only from structures within the main ultrasound beam. Number five, the imaging plane is thin. Number six, the amount of time it takes an echo to return to the transducer determines the depth of a structure in the body. And number seven, sound attenuates at an even rate in the tissue. Note that attenuation means a reduction in the strength of a sound wave as it travels deeper and deeper into the tissue. There's five categories of ultrasound artifacts that can occur. Ultrasound beam artifacts, multiple echo artifacts, velocity error artifacts, attenuation artifacts, and Doppler artifacts. One category of ultrasound artifacts are known as Doppler artifacts. These are artifacts that occur when using color, power, or spectral Doppler. Doppler artifacts occur based on the premise that blood vessels always course in a straight line, blood vessels are the same width throughout, and velocity in a vessel never exceeds the Nyquist limit. The Nyquist limit is the upper limit of the Doppler shift that can be displayed by the ultrasound machine. Doppler artifacts also occur based on the premise that the Doppler angle is always exactly 60 degrees and the patient is always stationary while Doppler is being performed. In reality, Doppler artifacts occur because patients move, known as motion artifact, blood vessels often curve or are torturous, blood vessels can have narrowing within them, known as stenosis, velocity in a vessel can exceed the Nyquist limit, it's not possible to always obtain a Doppler angle of 60 degrees, and machine settings may be improperly set. Types of Doppler artifacts include aliasing, spectral broadening, motion, also known as flash artifact, noise, crosstalk, also known as mirror image artifact, color bleed, twinkle artifact, and improper Doppler angle. The first type of Doppler artifact is known as aliasing. First, it's important to discuss the Nyquist limit. The Nyquist limit is the upper limit of the Doppler shift that can be displayed by the ultrasound machine. Pulsed wave Doppler has a limit of how high the velocities are that it can measure. The Nyquist limit is half of the PRF the pulse repetition frequency. The image to the right is an example of color Doppler aliasing. In the top image, the scale is set incorrectly, resulting in aliasing, which is the multiple varied colors within the color Doppler signal box. The bottom image, the scale has been set higher to compensate for the artifactual aliasing, and you'll note the nice even colors within the color Doppler box. Ultrasound pulses are transmitted at a certain frequency, known as the PRF, or pulse repetition frequency. The maximum Doppler frequency that can be measured is half of this frequency, half the PRF. This is known as the Nyquist limit. If the frequency shift is higher than the Nyquist limit, then aliasing occurs. Aliasing is artifactual velocities that occur when the velocity of the flow has exceeded the Nyquist limit, or the Doppler settings are incorrect. Other causes of aliasing include vessel narrowing, branching, sharp turns, or the use of increasing Doppler angles, or angles above 60 degrees. Spectral Doppler aliasing is displayed on the ultrasound as the peaks of the waveform crossing over the baseline or wrapping around. Dropping the baseline and increasing the scale or the PRF are two techniques to eliminate artifactual spectral 
spectral Doppler aliasing. The next type of ultrasound Doppler artifact is known as spectral broadening. On ultrasound, a normal spectral Doppler waveform displays a clear Doppler window. This is the area below the waveform that has no Doppler echoes within it. Spectral broadening is the filling in of the Doppler window with echoes. Spectral broadening can be an artifact and can also occur due to the presence of disease, indicating turbulence within a vessel, such as posterior to a stenosis. Artifactual causes of spectral broadening include the spectral Doppler gain being too high, improper Doppler angle, the Doppler sample gate being too large, the Doppler sample volume not in the middle of the vessel, or due to patient or transducer motion. Our next type of ultrasound Doppler artifact is known as motion or flash artifact. This is a type of noise artifact, and this is extraneous echoes within a color or a power Doppler box. This is most commonly seen with power Doppler as power Doppler is oversensitive. This occurs due to the patient, the transducer, or anatomical motion, such as movement of the heart or the lungs. The artifactual echoes represent motion by the patient, by anatomy, or by the transducer, rather than the motion of the red blood cells, which is a true Doppler signal. Noise is our next type of ultrasound Doppler artifact. Noise is artifactual echoes within a color or power Doppler box that do not correspond to a true Doppler signal. This can be due to the color or power Doppler gain control being set too high. When the gain is set too low, blood flow information can be lost, which is decreased Doppler sensitivity. When the gain control is set too high, spurious echoes or noise are present within the Doppler box. To set the proper color or power Doppler gain level, turn the gain all the way up until the noise is displayed within the Doppler box. Then turn the gain slowly down just until the noise disappears. Our next type of ultrasound Doppler artifact is known as crosstalk. Another name for this is mirror image. And this is a mirror image of the spectral waveform pattern, which shows up on the opposite side of the baseline. This occurs when the spectral Doppler gain is set too high or the Doppler angle is set at 90 degrees. At 90 degrees, there is no Doppler shift. This also occurs with a very strong Doppler signal within a vessel, causing a carbon copy in the opposite direction. Our next type of Doppler ultrasound artifact is known as color bleed. When the color or power Doppler gain is set too high, color bleed can occur. Color bleed is when the color Doppler signal spills over the edge of a vessel. Color bleed represents artifactual Doppler signals, making vessels appear wider than they truly are. The color gain should be set so that the walls of the vessel are clearly visible. Twinkle artifact is our next type of ultrasound Doppler artifact. Twinkle artifact is a type of reverberation artifact, specifically comet tail artifact. Twinkle artifact occurs posterior to a strong reflector with a rough surface, such as a biopsy clip, calcifications, or kidney or bladder stones. Twinkle artifact appears as alternating artifactual aliasing colors posterior to the strong reflector. This can be a helpful artifact to find small stones not visible to the naked eye. To correct for twinkle artifact, move the focus above the area of the twinkle artifact. Next, let's talk about ultrasound artifacts that occur due to improper Doppler angle. An ideal Doppler angle is an angle of zero degrees. However, this is extremely hard to obtain. This is an angle that's parallel to the vessel. Because of that, angles one to 60 degrees are most commonly used. When the angle is over 60 degrees, it results in velocity errors, which underestimate or overestimate flow velocities and they increase spectral broadening artifacts. Not to mention they're extremely hard to reproduce in future follow-up studies. When a Doppler angle of 90 degrees is used, no Doppler shift occurs, so there's no flow information. And 90 degrees is perpendicular to the vessel. Interested in more ultrasound artifact videos? Stay tuned on Wednesdays where I'll be releasing a new artifact video each week for a total of six videos about ultrasound artifacts. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and stay tuned for our next videos.